Good Thursday morning, everyone. Welcome back to another Weather on the Go weather forecast. And in this video, I will be talking about Hurricane K and the rest of the tropics, as well as an extreme heat wave bringing critical fire weather concerns across the western United States, a heavy rain setup into early next week across the upper Midwest, and your long range weather forecast here towards the end of this video. If you guys have our new viewers out there, if you guys have not subscribed to the YouTube channel, hit the subscribe button down below. It's free to do, guys, and you get all my weather forecast information here up to date every single morning here on this weather forecast. So again, looking here at Hurricane K across the Eastern Pacific Ocean, getting very close here to the Baja of California. We can see a little bit of a disorganized eye wall here trying to form, but again, it's running into some uh, cooler waters and also some more shear just to the north here, getting closer to the Baja of California. And as it moves to the north, it'll start to weaken. Like I said, we have the cooler waters. We have more wind shear across this area as it moves up towards Southern California. It'll start to lose its punch back to more of a tropical storm and then a post-tropical depression as it kind of curls back southward here into this weekend and early next week. So again, right now it's a hurricane with sustained winds of 90 miles per hour moving north-northwest at 14 miles per hour right now. It will kind of skim right along the western coast there of the Baja of uh, California. And then as it moves up to the north, this could also bring some heavy rainfall for southern California and the southwestern United States. So that will be something to watch as well. So tracking this through the next few days this afternoon, it looks to be a 984 millibar low pressure, uh, low pressure system uh, with a hurricane, formidable hurricane at that, still ongoing this afternoon. That will move up to the north, weak into a tropical uh, storm, and then eventually a post-tropical depression later on Friday into your Saturday morning. And then as we get to later on Saturday, it's more of a heavy rain threat for portions of southern and perhaps even central California uh, with a weakening system down to a 1,000 three millibar low as we get towards Saturday afternoon. So looking at the heavy rainfall first for portions here of western Mexico into the Baja of California here, we could be seeing a couple of areas, especially as you get up into central and northern Baja of California, approaching five, six, seven inches here through the next couple of days. So definitely some runoff rainfall, some flash flooding potential, maybe some landslides as well across some of these areas. That will be something to monitor but also some beneficial rains across the southwestern United States, getting up toward Los Angeles, portions of southern and maybe central California, and then getting up towards Las Vegas here into southern Nevada, western Arizona. Yeah, some of these areas could be getting some beneficial rains all the way into the early portion here of this upcoming weekend. So that is some good news across some of these areas that have been just so drought inundated. Definitely some good news to get some moisture into the topsoil there and some of the moisture down below as well. So that is some good news as we head into this weekend. And, but the not so good news here is the Weather Prediction Center does have a moderate risk for excessive rainfall and numerous flash flooding potential here across the Los Angeles area, getting across Southern California even that slight risk across southwestern Arizona as well. So that will be something to watch. Some, you know, If you get into Los Angeles, you have a lot of concrete, a lot of pavement, and a lot of this heavy rainfall here just runs off. So that will be something to watch. And then another larger area across the southeastern United States with a slight risk for excessive rainfall, places like Alabama, Atlanta, Georgia, Savannah, Georgia, getting into the northern Florida peninsula there. So that will be something to watch as well as we head through the next couple of days. Looking back here across the Atlantic, still very busy in the tropical front here. We got Hurricane Danielle well up here into the northeastern edge of the screen. That's going to be pushing towards Europe. We got Hurricane Earl, which will become a major Hurricane Earl here in the next day or so across portions of the western Atlantic, moving just to the east of Bermuda. And then we got another couple of systems here coming off of Africa into the southern Atlantic we'll have to watch as we head through the next several days. So first off, let's look at Hurricane Earl here. Uh, this is actually going to continue to move back um, to a tropical storm status and then kind of do a, what we call a Fujiwara effect here with another upper level low pushing in closer to the system. And when you have two low pressure systems together, they kind of dance around each other. And that's what's called a Fujiwara effect. And it'll kind of move to the west and then kind of dance its way to the east, eventually becoming a tropical storm and then post-tropical depression as it moves towards the coast of Europe. So that will be something to watch as we head into early next week as it approaches some of those areas. But looking here at Hurricane 
Dwayne Earl. We've got a developing eye wall here. This is Earl, and we got a lot of uh, convection surrounding the developing eye wall, and this definitely signifies that, yeah, we got a widespread hurricane uh, with widespread rainfall around the outer edges. Some of these rain bands, we got some, uh, you know, uh, what we call arms that kind of extend off this hurricane. That means the hurricane's breathing. We got the warm water temperatures. We got low wind shear, perfect breeding ground for hurricane here, and you can see Earl is going to become a major system here for the next several days, really through much of the weekend here before kind of approaching some cooler waters and more winch here as it gets well up to portions of the northern Atlantic where Danielle is now and before it you know, drops back to a Category 1 hurricane and then a tropical storm as we head into early next week. But between now and then, as we head into later on today, I do think this afternoon or this evening will become a Category 3, if not a Category 4 hurricane, I think, as we get towards Friday morning and maintain Category 3 to Category 4 strength all the way through the middle of this weekend. So that will be something to watch, especially Especially if you live near Bermuda, we actually do have tropical storm warnings across Bermuda right now as well um, with the western flank here of the system starting to move in towards that area. And again, looking at the intensity here, it looks to remain at a steady Category 3, if not maybe borderline Category 4 system, 110 to 120 mile per hour hurricane here, I think, as we move through the next couple of days before it drops back to a Category 2, a Category 1, and then back to a tropical storm here as it kind of moves into the northern Atlantic with more of those cooler water temperatures and more of that wind shear kind of ripping apart this system. Looking back here to the south and uh, south and east, we got a 70% chance of a new system developing here um, across portions of the southern Atlantic Basin here. And this could be the next system that could become a tropical storm. We'll continue to watch it here. And then even behind that, we got a 30% chance here of a new system developing as well across these areas. So we'll continue to watch that here as we move through uh, the next few days and the next week or so to see if these systems develop a little bit further. But right now, kind of more worried about Earl as it moves up toward portions there of Bermuda. So looking overall at the whole satellite imagery here of the Atlantic as a whole, we got Hurricane Danielle well up here to the north on the northern end of the screen. We got a formidable hurricane, a major hurricane developing across portions of the western Atlantic, moving away from the general U.S., but we'll have to watch this in Bermuda with those tropical storm warnings. And then that 70% chance of development here with that wave moving off the southern uh, portions here of, you know, the, Atl the Atlantic Ocean. And then we got a 30% chance of development here with that system here with an open wave moving off of the coast there of Africa moving west northwestward here as well. So looking here at the weather forecast model, the ICON model, we can see a 690, uh, uh, actually a 969 millibar low pressure center here to the north. That's Danielle. We got a 953 millibar low. That is Earl across the Western Atlantic. We'll continue to watch Earl through the weekend, uh, you know, deepening to a 952 millibar low, a major hurricane here um, as we get towards portions of the Northwestern Atlantic through the weekend. We're watching the system down here to the south and east that's becoming maybe a tropical depression here as we head towards Saturday. And then as we get into early next week, this system may develop into a tropical uh, storm, maybe a tropical depression here to the south. We'll continue to watch that again, just really over the open waters of the southern Atlantic. So we're not worried too much about that. But yeah, Earl... Earl is going to be a 972 millibar low, and that's going to probably be a post-tropical storm or depression as it kind of moves into the middle portion of next week, well up to the north across the northern Atlantic. And again, we'll continue to watch these waves come off of Africa. And these could be, a, you know, a couple more systems that could develop here um, into tropical depressions, tropical storms, and hey, maybe even another hurricane or two. That is definitely not out of the question because of all of these warm waters we're seeing across these areas. And again, Again, as we get into the middle of next week, again, it is game on potentially for another hurricane or two, like I said. So that will be something to monitor as well. Looking at the Canadian model here, Canadian model agrees. The European model agrees. I do think here the, the confidence is high that we're going to have a couple more systems getting into the early and especially middle portion of next week. Guys, taking a break here real quick to tell you guys, you guys should go subscribe to the uh, to my sports channel, The Greatest Catch. Um, I, on there, I do previews of the NFL football season, also college football season, Major League Baseball, and Premier League Soccer for England. 
you get your accurate sports predictions on there. Um, it's in the description below. If you guys want to go subscribe to that, um, it's free to do again. You guys, all you have to do is subscribe to the, uh, click on it in the description below and subscribe to the Greatest Catch Sports Channel. I may be going live later for the Bills and Rams game. So uh, if I don't go live later for that game, I definitely will catch some of the Sunday games and even Monday games here for Monday Night Football coming up, uh, doing live play-by-play -play, um, broadcasts for that. So definitely go subscribe to the sports channel down below. Getting back here to the weather forecast, though, we got here the heat continuing across the western United States for your Thursday afternoon uh, this afternoon. And we got that ridge continuing to break down a little bit across the western United States. Certainly not as hot as the last couple of days, but still the heat is out there. And that will kind of break down a little bit further as we head into tomorrow, your Friday. And the reason being is we have a trough starting to develop across the northern plains and southern Canadian provinces that is going to bring some cooler temperatures across much of the northern plains and the upper Midwest with the cold front as we head into this weekend and early next week. Looking at the heat out there, we got excessive heat warnings again for much of California, southern Nevada, and par uh, parts of northern Arizona, southern Utah. These pink shaded areas across the Pacific Northwest into Washington and Oregon and getting all the way back across portions of the uh, central and northern plains, getting back into the Rockies there. That is actually red flag warnings for dry soils combined with some breezy conditions bringing the, you know, the fire weather risk uh, into critical levels across these areas. You can see critical fire weather risk across west central. Central Nebraska getting into southeastern South Dakota, as well as south central portions there of Idaho as well, not to mention the elevated fire weather risk across much of the Rockies here the central Rockies back toward the Pacific Northwest and the central plains as well. Um, so we'll continue to watch that again, getting closer toward the front range of the Rockies today. And then back toward the West here tomorrow, we got an elevated fire weather risk across parts there of uh, Washington and getting into Oregon, the Portland area, getting up towards Seattle. We definitely here have some elevated fire weather risk there tomorrow. So no burning outside guys, just steer clear of the grilling outside, steer clear of the campfires. Again, you want to be safe out there. You don't want to be spreading wildfires. So again, um, just take a couple days off from doing that and kind of let some of this, uh, you know, soil moisture start to kind of, uh, you know, seep into the ground if we have storm systems moving through. And again, I promise you guys we'll be able to do that at another time. Looking here at Thursday for today, we got widespread upper 90s to lower 100s across portions of the central and southern plains. Widespread 100s, if not 110s across central California. That heat will be on still today across these areas, but you can see to the north into Montana, significant cool down today of what you've seen yesterday into the middle of the week. Uh, that's that cold front and that trough starting to drop south here from Canada into the northern plains. We'll see that more defined. You can definitely tell where that cold front is as it drops southward here with a fall preview. We got upper 60s, guys. Upper 60s for highs in the portions there of, uh, you know, north central Minnesota, the Dakotas, back into eastern Montana there. Middle 50s potentially for portions there of like Cheyenne, Wyoming, uh, Rapid City, barely touching 60 degrees. So definitely a big cool, uh, cool down and kind of a fall preview for you guys up there. But again, the heat will be on again for portions of California, much of the desert southwest. And again, ahead of this cold front, we're still going to have those middle and upper 90s down towards Texas, Oklahoma, Kansas, and then some lower 80s, um, some humidity up toward the Chicago lakefront and portions of Detroit as we head into tomorrow afternoon. And showing you the trough here, we got kind of a positively to kind of neutrally tilted trough moving through. Pretty large trough as well. You can definitely see where all that cooler air is going to be dumping down into the portions of the northern plains and upper Midwest for tomorrow. That will continue as we head into the weekend although it does look like a low pressure system kind of an upper level low will start to develop later on this weekend here towards the western great lakes around the chicagoland area and it's going to kind of become cut off from the main flow in the jet stream so kind of a cut off low almost here as we head towards late this weekend into early next week and that will kind of set up a heavy rain potential across portions of the western great lakes into the upper midwest for your monday and into tuesday morning you can see that here using the weather forecast model the icon model widespread rainfall amounts from central iowa to south central wisconsin uh, places like uh, prairie du Chien, wisconsin up towards green bay milwaukee all the way back to des moines iowa we could be talking about widespread rainfall amounts of two to four maybe even five inches here locally across some of these areas 
area. So definitely watching that. And that's why the Weather Prediction Center did forecast a slight risk for excessive rainfall here on their day four excessive rainfall outlook for northwestern Illinois, southwestern Wisconsin, much of east central Iowa into southeastern portions of Minnesota, places like Rochester, Minnesota, La Crosse, Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin, Madison, Wisconsin, and then getting back toward the Des Moines area, Iowa City, Iowa, and the Davenport Quad Cities here as well along the Mississippi River in Iowa. So that will be a place to watch for some heavy rainfall, but looking longer range, guys, towards the middle of the month here of September, the six to 10 day temperature probability outlook uh, from the Climate Prediction Center. The ridge will build back across portions of the plains as we head in towards the middle of the month from that Tuesday the 13th through the Saturday the 17th time frame. And again, we'll see much above normal temperatures across much of the Rockies, the Central and Southern Plains, really all of the Great Plains, and then over there towards the uh, Great Lakes as well as the Northeast, uh, where we do have some rainy weather with that cold front moving through and a couple systems moving through. We'll have below normal precipitation, uh, below normal temperatures rather across the Tennessee uh, Valley there getting down towards the deep south and again a couple systems there across the west coast uh, bringing some cooler temperatures there as well looking here at the precipitation uh, from that 13th to the 17th time frame likely above normal uh, precipitation which is some good news across the western United States across the Rockies uh, portions of Nevada Idaho getting into Utah maybe even parts there of California as well below normal precipitation likely favored from North Texas into portions of Oklahoma the mid-south and much of the Tennessee and Ohio River valleys and then again with a couple of these systems moving through the Northeast could be slightly above normal during that time as well and Looking a little bit farther out, it really does look like we're going to kind of maintain that warmer than normal pattern across much of the center of the country and the eastern two-thirds of the country with some cooler weather off the west coast. And again, the northern jet stream is going to be more active, I think, as we get towards that third week in September, towards that 21st time frame, which would actually coincide with fall equinox. Um, again, some you know cooler rains potentially across portions of Montana, getting down to Idaho, uh, portions there of the Rockies over toward the upper Midwest. And again, a typical La Nina pattern will return with more drier weather across the south and southeastern United States towards that 21st time frame of the month of September. So thank you guys so much for watching. Definitely appreciate it. As always, remember to like the video down below by giving it a thumbs up. Leave any comments, questions, concerns below. I'll get to those later on today and answer all your questions out there. And subscribe, most importantly, to the YouTube channel. It's free to do. Go subscribe down below to the description here to the sports channel as well. Um, might as well subscribe to both channels, guys. You get accurate sports predictions and you also get your weather forecast from all your weather coverage here on weather on the go thank you guys so much for watching have a great thursday the rest a great rest of your week and i'll see you all in the next video